Hi everyone, it's Dennis Yusuf here from Inspired Growth Training and we are here for the BDM podcast show. Today, I've got Kelly Marks all the way from Victoria. Kelly, thank you very much for coming on board with us. Thank you so much for having me, Dennis. Don't be too formal. It's okay to relax, okay? <laughs> Shake it you out. Are, we were having a chat earlier and I love the fact that this is the first time you've done a podcast. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> I think it's I think it's awesome. Thank so you. I feel honored because you are kicking so many goals in the real estate industry. You may not feel like it because you're in it, right? You you're mm -hmm. just plodding along doing your thing and uh but you are. So from a real estate trainer's point of view, I'm watching what you're doing, as I am everyone else, and you're doing some amazing things. So well done. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dennis. I appreciate it. Now, before I kick you out, okay, mm -hmm. because I may kick you out depending on your answer to my next question, because it's oh, really important. Goodness. Everyone okay. wants to know, are you a coffee or a tea drinker? Um, can I say both? You're allowed to say both. I actually drink both. Um, a Melbourne girl, so I do love coffee. Um, but... My nan's English, so I quite often have a cup of tea also. That, that's cool. Like my mum is tea, tea, tea. She'll have one coffee a day and it's instant and it drives me crazy, right? But mm -hmm. um, obviously she was brought up in England as she's Cypriot Turk, but she was yep. brought up in England at a young age. So I have that British thing in us as well, you know. Mm -hmm. But Turkish, I drink coffee, of course, as yep. everyone. So, okay. <laughs> we know you're about coffee. <laughs> <laughs> how do you have your coffee? Uh, lactose free latte. Lactose free latte. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm going to say that's the first time I've heard of that one. Okay. My husband knows my order. My kids know my order. It's on repeat. That's for sure. <laughs> As they should. <laughs> awesome. So again, thanks for coming on. Can you tell us, okay, you've already said you're from Melbourne, which is the capital coffee of Australia. Okay. Yes. Why did you get into real estate? What was your thing? How, how did you get into real estate? And how did you get to where you are? And tell us about your business. Um, first got into real estate probably when I was purchasing my first property um, in my very early 20s. Um, researching and going through that experience, it actually piqued my interest Um and from there, it was something that I looked into a little bit further about the course, had no idea at that time about property management, sales, sales support, administration, but I just knew it was something that interests me, basically. Wow. So you were looking to buy. So was the transaction, you being part of the transaction that piqued your, yeah. your thought process on it? Yeah. Yeah. At the time, um, as I said, early 20s, I was just working in administration um, I knew that wasn't something that I saw myself doing long-term, um, but definitely going through the customer experience, um, was what piqued my interest firstly. Okay. So, so it's about six, seven years ago when you joined. Yep, real estate. definitely, definitely. <laughs> I, I find it really intriguing. It's interesting. And, and I'm probably going to bring this back up later. Yeah. It, it was about the, the experience, the customer experience, their journey that, that caught your attention. Yeah. 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 So did you have a good experience in buying your first investment property? I did. Um, to be honest, it's probably going to show my age and the fact that it wasn't six, seven years ago, but way back when I was looking through the newspaper at the listings and the open <laughs> times <laughs> and all of those sorts of things. Um, so I probably didn't have, you know, all the online bookings that we do have the luxury of having now. Um, it was literally looking through the newspaper of a Saturday morning, the open for inspections, making the phone calls um, and traipsing around the suburbs of Melbourne. Wow. Congratulations for being the first person bringing <laughs> up the newspaper <laughs> listings of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, we've evolved. We have. We have. And for those that are watching the video in the IGT Inner Circle, because that's where we will be releasing this podcast, mm -hmm. um, you'll agree that Kelly does look young, okay? 
So um, don't believe her that when she said <laughs> it was more than six years ago. So look, so what 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 do you do now? Like, what's your position? What's your business called? Um, I'm Max Property Specialist. Um, it is a family-run business. Basically, at the moment, it is just me. I do have some administration support. Um, my family, being my husband, who is a builder, um, is a great support in the business. Um, my children are a great support in the business. They get their pocket money through helping me, whether it be through designing, um, advertising. Um, they're great with things like TikTok, Canva, all of those sorts of tech things. Um, so my kids are a great support. Um, but we are a property management only business. We service okay. the northern suburbs of Melbourne um, from probably Essendon at the moment all the way through to Kilmore. So we border um, metro and regional. Wow. Okay. That's awesome. So do yeah. you do a commercial or like in property management as well or is it just residential? Purely- residential only. Um, yeah. In my early days, I worked for an office um that had a small commercial portfolio, um, but it's probably not something that I'm familiar with. So, yeah, yeah residential is my bread and butter, I guess. So what's your favourite thing about real estate? What do you love about real estate? What is it that, you know? The people. Ah, okay. To be honest yeah. with you. Um, it, it's To be honest, it's not always great and it's not, depending on the day you're having, it's not always the people. Um, but I love hearing people's stories, Um going through their homes when they are having us out to appraise a property, um, understanding their stories and their plans. uh, And every day is different. So that's something that, um, yeah, ticks my box. I've got to admit, I used to love stalking people. And I like when you're in the home and you're trying to work out their personality types, Mm -hmm. you're trying to find the rapport with the person. Building the connections, whether it's something to do with the family and the kid yeah. it might be sports or holidays. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Understanding their stories. It's fun. It is. It is. And obviously real estate property management especially is all about connecting with people. And the yeah. more people you can connect with, the more people you can talk to, the more business you're going to get, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And we'll get into how you're doing that in a second. But <laughs> um, so you're, you're part of the IGT Mastermind and yeah. uh, we've also got the PM Mastermind and that last week was an amazing discussion that Julie Collins and Darren um, had gone through was about how to avoid the conflict in communication and how to, you know, do better communication to avoid the conflict so it doesn't occur. And that was really good. What training have you done to help you in real estate? So I'm not talking about legislation stuff, right? But what yeah. have you done? What what continued development have you done, Kelly, that's helped you in real estate? Um, development, part of being um, the IGT inner circle, and it's probably not so much professional courses that I've enrolled and, and paid for, apart from obviously IGT, but it's about, I think, having connections with others through the industry and being able to share experiences Um might not necessarily be other PMs and business owners from Victoria, but right across the country, even across to New Zealand, um, and being able to share those experiences um, and I suppose bounce ideas off each other as well and different scenarios that we've experienced. It's interesting you say that because, yep, we have our subscription for the um, our members portal and we've got our IGT Mastermind, PM Mastermind stuff. But when you, the inner circle is an amazing community. Thank you for bringing that up. But you just attended our PM lead um, machine event that we did. Mm-hmm. Now, the training, we know it was good. And and I know we had a discussion. I'm going, I wanted to go deeper, right? Yeah. But the breaks, the dinners, the connection of the people was, you can't pay for that. No, no. I've as got a, recordings a, on my phone and, and yeah. you guys, and I've got a photo of you were even talking to our event planner, Jan, and there's his photo and, and you're both in mid-sentence and and that is <laughs> invaluable. Yeah, definitely, definitely. As a business owner um, with no employees, I really thrive on those connections. It's something that I miss being not being an employee and having others in the office 
um, just even how was your weekend? What's going on in life? And those sorts of um, conversations that you have. But being able to have those connections through um, IGT and attending those events, um, as you said, is invaluable. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's one of those things that, um, you know, we we strive to do is keeping you all connected, mm -hmm. you know, because we know that um, the success of people's real estate isn't about us as coaches and trainers. It, it's about the people and them implementing. And, yeah. and if we can bring you together, like, mm -hmm. that you're all like-minded, you're all wanting that growth, then you buzz off each other. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, yeah, it, it's really good. So, okay, what... What struggles are you facing at the moment, like in running the business, Kelly, or is it with new business coming in or what's something that, you know, what's the biggest challenge that you're facing? Um, the biggest challenge, it's probably, to be honest, exposure and getting my brand out there. Um, there are so many really large dominant franchise offices, I guess, through my core areas of where I work. And it's just, um, being noticed, making sure that when somebody is looking for property management services, um, that they know that I am there. Yeah. So in that, let's mm -hmm. talk about how you're overcoming it. So we've brought up the challenge. So what what are a couple of things, and and I'm, I'll help you with this, okay? But mm -hmm. what what what's one thing that you're doing so you can overcome that challenge and you can get seen more? My social media and being consistent is one thing that I'm really working on at the moment. That's um, two key points, social media okay. and consistency. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. okay, so get, what, what social media are you talking about? Um, I'm really working on um, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn is another thing that I'm working on. TikTok is not my strength, but as I mentioned earlier, it's something that my kids are really good at. So I'm trying to bring them in to teach mum a little bit about it. <laughs> That's good. That's yeah. okay. And it's interesting. We actually had like one of Australia's largest influencers at our own event. Yes. I know who you're speaking of. Nathan. And I didn't know at the time. Like, mm -hmm. No, but um, yeah, so uh, I think I might be getting him to do a guest appearance in our mastermind. That they are members; they've just signed up as masterminders as well. That so would be amazing. To... I'll definitely yeah. be front and center for that one. I, I think so. Um, even if we just like we'll do a bonus session, right? And that's the mm -hmm. great thing about um, you know the the network that we've they've brought together is we can call upon each other, just like what we're doing in this podcast. You're mm -hmm. one of our IGT masterminders and you're about to share some of the things. And what I love is, you know, okay, you're saying that you're not just 26 anymore, but you're still willing to learn. Definitely. Right? There's lots to learn. Networking and stuff. So now you, so you brought up LinkedIn, you brought up TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, right, as well. What are you doing on the social so you stand out, right? So you're working on them. But let's dig in a little bit deeper to help those listeners out there. Um. I'm bringing in at the moment some Friday facts. So frequently asked questions. So if it's something that I'm hearing on repeat, there's going to be plenty of other people that have the same questions. So I'm trying to record small clips um, and push that out through Instagram, um, YouTube and so forth. So when you say small clips, you're talking about video? Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay, and, and you've done some really good. I used a couple of your videos um, as examples that I loved, I thought. Mm -hmm. So because it, it is a key point of difference that you're also using within your business. Now, you're talking about the, the, the other big groups, right? We don't have to mention names. And in Melbourne, there's more big groups than any other state in Australia. Okay. okay? So, you know, you've got the, the big four, plus mm -hmm. you've got a lot of private entities that quite large groups. Yeah. within Melbourne. Um, but one of the key points of differences that you did is you showed 360 routine and ingoing reports. And I thought that was fabulous. Yeah. Right. Because you're educating people how routine's done. And at the same time, you're highlighting a point of difference of what your business is doing over your riders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, lo I love my 360 camera. <laughs> 
Yeah. You can help. And are you using that for your marketing of properties as well? Yes. Yes. So at the moment, I do have that as um, an optional add on. Um, But most people are actually taking it up. So I'm looking at um, whether I will just have that as an inclusion as part of my marketing package um, and increase the value of the, the cost of that. Totally. So what I would be doing is I wouldn't have it in as a standard inclusion, mm-hmm. right? If you're feeling like you haven't quite won the o- the owner over, I'd say anyone that signs with us in the second week of or um, I've got um, the, the people who are, um, you know, um, the – the company that's helping us put together the virtual tours have agreed to give me four a month. If yep. you, you, know, you could be one of the four if you signed with us today, right? Okay. So try and use it as an incentive, okay. you know, or you could do anyone that signs in the month of January, February, March, April, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or the first four that sign, you know? So yep. use it as a, so they're thinking, oh, wow, what, you do 360? So if it's an add-on, they think it's expected. We, yep. You want to talk it up. Look, no one else is offering this, et cetera, but we are part of our package. So I'd, I'd try and use it as some incentive to come in, you know, okay. which is really good. So um, what would you say, okay, if Dennis rings Kelly up and says, Kelly, I've got to jump on an aeroplane and masterminds tomorrow. You've got to train everyone. What are you going to train them on? So you're in <laughs> When you're watching the video, everyone, you're going to see the look on Kelly's face. (laughs) So, Okay, so because you've got a few things working for you, you're doing the video, you're looking at TikTok, um, you're you're looking at the stats, you're doing the 360s, you've got consistency, you're talking about some really key points, Mm -hmm. which is I think it's great. Now, what are you going to train on? So if you're in charge, what would you love to train on? Or what would you love to lead discussions about because if you go back to mastermind i'm actually not doing much talking i get everyone else to share and talk right would i be doing it would i can't be specific but it'd have to be something to do around tech so whether that's your 360 um virtual tours i'm fascinated by tech um it's not something To be honest, it's not something that I am great at, um, but I love learning about it and testing things and seeing how it works, how it can save me time, um, how it can better perform, um, whether it be marketing, routine inspections and those sorts of things. Um, So it would have to be something around tech, I think. I think that's a, a great topic. I mean, one of your questions you asked me is, where's Darren's, where's Michael's material mm-hmm. from the AI training at the event? Yeah. Like, I find it fascinating. It, it's very fascinating. And I think it, it is a really good topic. And in, in today's session, Kelly, um, everyone was saying, Michael, slow down. Because <laughs> he yeah. he, he's like Elon Musk. It just goes over your head. He does. Yeah. He does. I was I was sitting there at the event. I'm sure, and my jaw was down here, thinking, "Oh my god, this is amazing! How am I going to do all this?" But um, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn, um, and how it can just streamline processes is save us time, so that we can work on building those relationships and other things that um, are important to business. Yeah, that that bot building thing that um, he's put together. Look, he he's. I I'm not sure if he did bring it up. But um, like I've got my PM Lead Secrets book here, my th- best three ways book, um, and all of the videos I've done on training, he's put it into a bot. Mm-hmm. He's created a Dennis Yusuf bot, right? And he's put it into an email component, this bot. So if you emailed me, Dennis, I'm about to start my own business, what are five things I should do before, like for best lead generation? Yeah. And I'm I'm on stage training or I'm on an airplane. I come back, I open my emails and the drafts are there for me to pick which one I should send out. It's amazing. <laughs> Can you imagine being a, a, a property manager or a business owner like yourself, Kelly, and mm-hmm. an owner is requesting three quotes or, yeah. you know, um, how much are your fees and what does it do? And it's all there for you or it's a legislation question. So it can be done. That's... So it's not taking things away, but it's speeding things up for you. 
yeah, I think it's the tools are there to be able to assist business, not be the business, I guess. Yeah. Well, you love working with people and you still want to be working with people, hmm. right? Yeah. It's just, yeah, it, it's good. So I, I think that's a, a great example of what you could train on. And before mm-hmm. you know it, um, Dennis might have you doing a session uh, on technology. <laughs> and, and it's just a discussion, right? So yeah. the good the good thing about it. So what do you think is your number one um, source of business coming in? Like why are people calling Kelly? Why are they coming to you? What What's working best for you? Um, I do have a fairly solid referral network. Um, so people that I've worked with in the past, whether it be tradespeople, um, my husband also is a builder locally. Um, so I do get a little bit of referral business there. Um, that's probably my main source at the moment. Um, yeah, I, th- I think that would be where majority of my inquiry comes from. So your network is your net worth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So it's basically around that networking and that family referral. So would you, so in that, so obviously a lot of your businesses coming in, you've got those warm, their warm leads that trust is already built. Mm -hmm. So how many times would somebody ask you for a discount, Kelly? And how do you overcome that? It does happen. Um, You need to, when you're talking to anybody, whether it is a warm lead or a cold lead, you need to show your value. Um, so whether that's through your experience, um, the technology and the tools that you have um, to utilise um, different case studies and experiences that you've mm. had yourself in dealing with different scenarios um, and just showing your true worth in your fees. If you're showing your worth in your fees, hopefully they won't need to question it any further. Yeah, so because when clients can see that you're saving them money for using you, Mm-hmm. It doesn't become about the fees. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> have you got videos where you're sharing some um, experiences that owners have had that you can, you then share to your socials? Oh, my goodness. I just got off the phone from. I've got a couple of videos where I have broken down um, vacancies. So mm-hmm. when I've gone into an appraisal um, and it might be, townhouse development a row of eight townhouses where we've listed at such and such um, price if you're in a new estate with plenty of new builds you need to make sure that your property is standing out and why are people going to look at yours first and in effect be tenanted first Mm. Um, so breaking down the figures where we might have come maybe 10 15 dollars a week under what everybody else is asking for breaking that down and what that's potentially saving you over the first 12 months um, and that's the types of videos. I've done a couple of those um, on my socials, Instagram and so forth, to show where I've saved my owner's money. That's great. And you can repurpose those. What's stopping you from resending that out every second month, for yep. example? Because there's a new audience that's coming through at the same time, Yeah, which is, which is really cool. So, okay, what advice, Kelly, would you give yourself, right, mm-hmm. knowing what you know now? Okay, with your expertise, knowing what you know now, if you met yourself the first day that you were going into real estate, what advice would you give yourself? Oh, what advice would I give myself? Um, Firstly, be yourself. Um, And probably speak up. Um, I've worked in offices where they're very sales-dominated, um, and property management's the little brother or sister um, in the background. But don't be afraid to speak up. If you've got an opinion or even if it's a question that needs to be asked, ask it. That, that would probably be my key thing. So they're not necessarily property management related, but be confident, be yourself, speak up. I think that's good advice, you know. Having confidence is, you know, it's a it's a key thing. It really yeah. is. You walk into an appointment with the confidence that you're the best in your area, then it, it does make it a lot easier for you yeah. in, in doing it. So is there anything that you would do differently starting, you know, if you were to start your business again now, knowing what you've done, you know, is there something that you would put in place first over what you've previously had done? Um, 
going out of my own, you don't, you don't need all the subscriptions from day one. Yes, there are so many subscriptions um, and tools that are there, but they can be brought on eventually. I think I got a little bit overwhelmed initially. I need to have this. I need to have this. Um, and I suppose it depends on your cash flow and your finances and all that sort of thing to begin with. Um, but set yourself a timeline of when those sorts of things should be brought on and implemented into the business because they don't all need to be from day one. Yeah, yeah. That's good advice because everyone thinks that you need to have it now. No. Yeah. There are there are some non-negotiables um, in there, but it doesn't all need to be from day one. I'm 18 months in and there's still things that I would really like to bring on, um, mm. but they're not quite yet. They're not too far away but um, I'm not ready to bring them on just yet. Okay, I've got a question with regards to our PM event that you came to, our lead machine mm -hmm. event, right? I, mm -hmm. I want to know. Now, Kelly didn't know this question's coming as you didn't know <laughs> the questions, right? Mm -hmm. what, what are you putting in place from attending that event? Um, I have a list, actually. What am I putting in place? Um, I have... There's tech that I'm bringing in, yep. um, subscriptions, my IRE BDM. I'm bringing that on to help me with lead generation and those sorts of things. Um, my consistency. Um, oh my goodness, I've I've been implementing literally since I got back. I've had I've got Michael's book that I read on the plane on the way back to Melbourne. <laughs> Oh, that's implementing. Um, You're not even home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was reading on the plane. Um, I have so many things, and I'm constantly speaking to people that also attended the event, um, which is great. So we're, I guess, bouncing ideas off each other. I spoke to a couple of people that attended that were actually that are in different states, um, looking at doing maybe something similar to this, like a little podcast or Zoom where we can talk about different experiences in different states and how things differ from, say, Melbourne to Perth and Adelaide. Um, there's so much. There's so much. And it will probably, the list that I have, to be honest with you, Dennis, I probably won't get it all done in the 12 months till the next event. That's how and, and it's not expected to get it all no, done. No, but right? I just, my brain is just constantly going and I have a list of things that it would be great if I can get them done. But, I mean, I know things that are going to take time to implement. Um, they can't just happen like that. But the things that I can do right now, I'm working on, on doing that. So, it, And what's really surprising with business, right, is like after six to nine months after the event, and, and we'll do other events as well, but naturally you will be putting those things in place for getting you wrote it down, mm -hmm. you know, because it's it's in the back of the head, you know, yep. those things will, will occur, you know. And um, I think I know who you're talking to about the podcast as well, and mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea. It's something that I've been training on for years. There's nothing stopping you from calling an agency in another state, doing a Zoom and, and sharing. So asking, hey, what's working for you? What marketing? Oh, well, well we're here at uh, doing this to help our owners. So it, it benefits both of you for both markets. It, it's a mm -hmm. great idea and it showcases that you're the market expert when you're doing yeah, that. People don't realise that just how differently different states do things, whether it be legislation or um, marketing. Yeah, it's so different. I, I probably underestimated how different things are from state to state myself. So I can only imagine what prospective clients think. That'd make a great video. <laughs> <laughs> My coach I'm this taking subject. notes. I'm taking notes. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I'll give you a copy of the recording. Don't worry. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> but, but, like, let, let's be honest. Did you know? Remember we talked about those hooks. Yeah. Did you know in mm -hmm. Queensland? So Victorian landlords, did you know? Mm -hmm. Right? So that that's, you know, I think it's a great hook, you know. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Kelly, thank you so much. Um, I think we could keep talking. I, I've got lots and lots of more questions to go. You know, mm -hmm. but um, I've got um, another recording to get to straight after this one. My yep. brother has sent me a text during this podcast recording oh. saying the internet's about to go. Oh. <laughs> the that won't that won't be good. <laughs>
I'm going to have to do my next recording off my phone. But um, thank you so much. Where, where can people me. contact you? Because um, they would love to follow you on socials. What's the best way to, to reach out to you? Uh, socials, Mark's Property Specialist, Instagram, Facebook, um, our website, www.markspropertyspecialist, with an S at the end, .com.au. Um, when you find me, send me an email, give me a call. Always happy for a chat. As I said, I love chatting to anyone. <laughs> and I'll be tagging Kelly in the inner circle as well. Uh, and for those who want to join the inner circle, please make sure when you do your search on Facebook for IGT inner circle, answer the questions or Dennis, the admin man won't let you in because I'm really strict on making sure that it's property managers that are in there. We're getting a lot of investors um, that aren't even in the industry trying to get in, you know, because oh. we see in other groups that they start trolling property managers and that. But um, yeah. it's the place to be, Dennis. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. But Kelly, thank you so much for your time. Um, really appreciate you taking the time out so you can influence other people to do what you're doing and you're doing a great job again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dennis. Appreciate it.